So now it's my turn. And I expected that something like this might happen. It had to. Had to happen. Uh, I've been successful in fighting against the left's agenda, especially the trans agenda, and especially recently. Those who support the sexual mutilation of children know full well that I am a threat to them because we're winning and they're losing. And they know that too. And they can't engage with our, with our arguments. They can't uh, oppose us on the battlefield of ideas. So instead, they look for another way. And now they're convinced they found their kill shot against me by using the same method they always use, which is digging up ancient history, doing the internet equivalent of rummaging through garbage cans to find things that were done and said years ago, which can be used to defame and, they hope, silence me today. So yes, my, my PR team over at Media Matters apparently wasn't satisfied to promote just my current show and all the work they do there. So they decided to go back 15 years to my time as a rock radio host on an obscure station in uh, Delaware, which is also an obscure state. And they spent, it would seem, many tedious hours listening to segments and bits from my time as a shock jock in my early 20s. It could not have been easy to sit through. Um, I, I commend their persistence, at least. And now they've compiled their findings into an expose that promises to reveal my, quote, sordid past. Honestly, I, I never thought of myself as having a sordid past. I figured my life was far too boring and sort of uh, banal and normal for that. But it turns out that I'm a more interesting person than I had previously thought. So as for the vultures at Media Matters and the leftists who've picked up this hit piece and run with it, um, they are not very interesting. They are doing what they always do. They're as pathetic and desperate as I've always known them to be. The left, they're not interested in investigating children's hospitals that literally castrate and butcher children. In fact, such investigations, I've been told, are an act of terrorism. But they will take the time to scour the internet for evidence that I made offensive remarks when I was 23 years old. That, in their minds, is far more relevant to the public. It's a matter of, a, of greater national urgency, they think. So, with that in mind, let's talk now, if this is what they want to talk about, for a few moments about the deep, dark secrets of my past, the skeletons that have been hiding in my closet, waiting to be discovered by intrepid reporters at Media Matters. I will tell you the whole ghastly story, even the parts that Media Matters didn't include. I'll tell you the whole story. So when I was 20 years old, I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in a small town in Delaware and started working at a rock station with a staggering audience that easily reached into the Hundreds, I think. Those are my humble beginnings, or, or maybe the dark and sinister origins of the world's most notorious terrorist, depending on who you listen to. So I worked at the station until I was uh, 25. For a couple of years during that period, I hosted a morning show where we often did flout the rules of political correctness, as was the custom on morning radio at the time. In their hit piece, Media Matters presents evidence that I used racially insensitive humor that I told inappropriate jokes, that I engaged in lots of offensive activities. All of that, of course, is true. Um, they also accused me of physically abusing our radio interns by tasing one of them as a joke. That's also true. And I submit, still funny. In fairness, I got tased too. In fact, I invented a game back in those days called Taser Trivia, where, as the name suggests, you are asked trivia questions, and if you get it wrong, you get tased. Uh, Media Matters didn't post that video, uh, but, but they should have, because it's quite shocking, literally and figuratively. So I'll post it for you now. Here it is. Category will be science and nature. Okay. And the three question... What astrological chart takes its name from a Greek word meaning circle of little animals? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Hold on. All right. Astrological chart that takes its name from what? Circle. Let me read this again. Oh, this sucks, Sorry, I'm guys. getting the taser out. Circle of I little know. animals. Circle of little animals. Circle of life. Um, um, uh, it, uh. <laughs> Just answer uh, it! 
uh, the answer is uh, 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 the uh, the chart of um, of uh, the chart of magnesia. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now, if I should be canceled for anything, uh, it for it should be for for being such a such a pansy in that video. Uh, that was embarrassing, actually. Get it together. I mean, it does hurt to get to get tased, and for some reason, we decided to add the blindfolds into it as well to just make it more because you never know when the tase is coming. Our biggest mistake was that we used trivial pursuit questions. We used like old school trivial pursuit as the questions for tased trivia. I don't think anyone got the answer right, so we just got tased fifty times. Anyway, that's the sort of content that you missed out on if you didn't live in southern Delaware in the early 2000s. But there's more. Media Matters reveals that I once challenged the intern to lick the inside of a dumpster. Which again is true, but the part they leave out is that afterwards we called a doctor on the air to find out what sort of diseases he might have picked up from the stunt. And from what I recall, the answer was uh, many. Also, Again, as Media Matters exposes, like any other hacky morning show at the time, we did prank calls, and some of the prank calls were offensive by current standards. Sometimes on a call, I would imitate a black man. On one occasion, I attempted to portray a man with split personalities, one of whom was black and the other white. It was very high concept sort of work, and it, it worked better on paper than it did in execution, I can tell you. But not all of our prank calls were racially charged. Only most of them were. We did one where I called a hotel pretending to be pretending to be a wizard who had left his magical sword in his room. It was, I think without question, the nerdiest prank call anyone has ever made. And it deserves to be recognized as such in the Guinness Book of World Records, I submit. But Media Matters didn't include that video in their expose. Maybe they can find room for it in the follow-up that I'm sure is coming. Uh, yet, it wasn't all fun and games. Media Matters reports that I made politically inflammatory statements, including at a Tea Party rally where I got into an argument with a guy in the audience while I was on the stage, and it ended with me calling him an, quote, old fart. Um, that's the kind of devastating insult I could throw around before I became one myself. But my political extremism wasn't confined to yelling at people at uh, Tea Party rallies. One thing Media Matters doesn't mention, perhaps doesn't know, but now they will, is that I ran for mayor of my town um, at that time, and, and I lost by a vote of, if I remember correctly, 450 to 26. The campaign ultimately floundered because I never uh, campaigned, and also I had no platform of any kind, and I mainly just entered the race because I thought it would be funny, and it was. And also, I really wanted to try my hand at making a corny campaign ad where I say absolutely nothing of substance. And that, at the end of the day, was really the only reason I ran, was just so that I could do this. Here it is. All right, if we're going to get this belt off, we need to remove the alternator and slip past the water pump. Let me get that half-inch socket. Thanks. All right, why don't you give it a shot here? Oh, hey, how's it going? Friend Crank here got himself stranded again. Car broken down. You know something? Just strikes me. I think Georgetown's a little broken down too, don't you? But don't worry. Sometimes you just need a friend to come by and help you out of a jam. And that's all I'm going to do as mayor of Georgetown. But to fix a car, just like to fix a broken city, you need a few things. First of all, the right tools. A wrench? Well, works perfect for a car, but not for a city. To fix a city, what you need is some integrity. A little bit of honesty. How about some character? And then there was that LSD we talked about earlier. Loyalty, strength, and devotion. I truly can't believe I only got 26 votes. But it doesn't end there. Other leftists have uh, joined the hunt, digging up their own evidence. And uh, this is when the pile, uh, pile on starts happening, right? Uh, one of them starts it and says, look at all these terrible things. And then uh, everyone else says, I'm going to find more terrible things. And they did. They found more terrible thing things. One now viral video that's making the rounds online shows me and my co-host burning a book over a charcoal grill. And then we then dance around the flames and make whooping noises like Indians. That's all real. You see that video, it's 100% real. We really did that. But the backstory is that we had the author of that book, whose name I forget, 
on the show, and he annoyed us for reasons that I also forget. So we said we were going to burn his book in reprisal, and we did. And again, it was funny. Though in hindsight, probably not the best thing to do in the middle of a political campaign. But the left is not satisfied to merely accuse me of racism, terrorism, political extremism, workplace violence. They're also absurdly claiming that I advocated child brides. And for that bit of defamation, they are using another segment from over a decade ago where we discussed the issue of teen pregnancy. And I pointed out that in the past, teen pregnancy wasn't considered a problem because people got married younger. I was attempting to highlight in an admittedly awkward and rambling way in my early 20s, riffing off the top of my head during a rock morning show to an audience of almost no one at the time, the fact that unwed pregnancy is a core problem that plagues our society and it's still a problem even when the unwed pregnant person is an adult. So no matter the age, I argued at the time, pregnancy has become a crisis when they happen outside of marriage without a stable family structure in place to care for the child. This was, again, not an issue in earlier times because people got married young and stayed married. It's not the way our society is today, though, of course. At its core, it's a rather uncontroversial historical observation, but the left has latched on to this point from years ago and tried to use it to flip the groomer label around on me, accusing me of, quote, promoting teen pregnancy and even uh, child rape, as some of the libelous statements would have it. This is a defamatory lie. They know it's a lie, and it shows how desperate they are. They've chosen the most toxic smears available because smears are all they have. Now, in summary, my enemies have thrown every last thing they can at me, the whole kitchen sink and a few of the appliances to go along with it. I'm not the first person to get this treatment, obviously. I certainly won't be the last. Their objective is nothing less than the wholesale destruction of my life and my career. That's what they're going for. That's the price they expect me to pay for opposing them effectively. They hope to force me to submit and apologize, at which point, of course, as it goes, they'll shoo me away with my tail between my legs, out of public view, out of the arena, off into obscurity. This is my punishment, you know, the life sentence they expect me to serve for trying to stop them from abusing and butchering children. And it's not just me they're after. You know, they want to send a message to everybody else. They want to send a message to you that if you stand up against them, this is what happens. They want to make me into another head on a spike, one of many. They put out on the edge of town a warning to anyone else who might think about disobeying their rules. So here's my official answer for the record. Um, kiss my ass. I do not apologize. In fact, by all rights, you sick freaks should be the ones apologizing to me for lying and defaming me and doing it all because I'm trying to prevent you from sexually mutilating children. You damned monsters. You child abusing psychopaths. I wouldn't apologize to you soulless parasites if I had a gun to my head. Instead, I'd rather just tell you all to piss off. I apologize for nothing. I concede nothing. I will never surrender even a single inch of ground to a pitchfork mob of degenerate morons. You know, the secret they never say out loud is that nobody is truly canceled unless they consent to it and they willingly play their assigned roles. Well, I do not consent. And I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going anywhere. I am more motivated than ever to oppose you and to fight against everything you stand for because I hate everything you stand for. And I hate it more with each passing day. So you can try to humiliate me. You can try to ruin my reputation. You can accuse me of all of the most heinous crimes that you can invent in your tiny, feverish little brains. But I am not going anywhere. Staying in a fight. Never leaving. I promise you that. Also, for the record, I will always maintain that tasers are a wonderful source of comedy. That's not going to change either. And that'll do it for us today as we move over to the members block of the show. Hope to talk to you uh, then. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.